We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created. Are As a member of Congress, I get to have a lot of really interesting people in the office. Experts on what they're talking about. This is the podcast. For insights into the issues. China, bioterrorism, Medicare for all. In-depth discussions. Breaking it down into simple terms. We hold. We hold. We hold these truths. We hold these truths. With Dan Crenshaw. Welcome back, folks. If you're a parent these days, um, you've been, uh, of course, paying attention to what's been going on in schools and, and some of the, um, the, the, the parent rebellions uh, in those schools. Recently, we, we saw a, a very large group of Muslim activists uh, in, in Northern Virginia uh, just saying they've had enough. They, they'd had enough of the gender indoctrination, their kids learning odd things about you know gender fluidity and, and all the non- We've all heard it, all the nonsense in the schools. And they just had enough and actually confronted um, a bunch of woke left wingers, which is and the reason this is interesting is because it's not something we, we see a whole lot of. And so today I have Asra Nomani. Asra is a longtime activist in this field, a practicing Muslim herself, has been writing, fighting these battles for a long time from from women's rights in, in Islam um, to I mean, to, to journalism since the days of Daniel Pearl, uh, kidnapped and killed, the days of 9-11. Uh, you've been at this a long time, so I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation about your perspective on the role of Islam, uh, what it is, what it isn't, uh, what the woke army is. You wrote a book called The Woke Army, uh, and, 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 and how that's led us into today. So, Asra, thanks so much for, for being on. Oh, thank you so much. And I promise everyone that by the end of our conversation, they're going to know what a Muslim feminist looks like. Yeah, I, I think that'll be really interesting. We'll, yeah. we'll definitely dive into that. Let's start with the story um, that I just that I just uh, referenced. So it was it was not that long ago. Um, I, I don't get the exact date on my on the top of my head, but it was. Were, were you involved in that, or what did you? And, and if you weren't, or were, like, what what lessons do we take from that? Well, you know, since two. 2020, there has been this parent revolt. And so I've been a parent in Fairfax County, Virginia, which is sort of like the hub for the parent movement today. I'm an immigrant from India. My son was born in this country, first generation. And I saw when he was a junior in high school, this new indoctrination coming into our school system. And the first thing- What, they, what year? What, what years are we talking? That was 2020. 2020. Okay. Know? So he's a junior in 2020. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So there it is. I'm the editor of the PTSA newsletter, and I see that they are weaponizing George Floyd's tragic killing and using it to bring activist agenda into our school system. And and you said you're an editor. You're more than that. Uh, Sorry, I didn't. I didn't do. I didn't do your bio justice. If if we don't mind, can we? You don't think it's enough for people to know that I was the editor (laughs) editor of the PTSA? PTSA Well, you're uh, a former Georgetown professor as well. Um, uh, You have an MA from American University. uh, Your master's from American University. You've worked as a correspondent for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I mentioned Daniel Perkins Pearl because he was your colleague uh, in, in, in in Pakistan. Um, he, he was murdered, uh, kidnapped by Islamic terrorists. And um, so you, you've been, I guess, at, and you're now a senior contributor at The Federalist. So not not just an activist, you're, you've been writing and, and, and very uh, knowledgeable about these facts for a very long time. So go yeah. back to you, sorry. But it's just, just like every parent, we try to use our talents for the service of our community and our kids. And so that's why I was the editor of our newsletter. And why especially? Because at my son's high school, it's called Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. It's a majority minority school, as they call it. Seven out of 10 of the students are of Asian descent, Mm -hmm. including my son. And so there we are in June 2020. And this woke agenda has come into our K through 12 public schools. Yeah. And all of a sudden I see that the principal wants to go after our families who have survived communism, mm. the cultural revolution, poverty, you know, and economic migration. Right. And she called us out for our quote privileges. And what is the woke agenda in this specific case? Yeah. Cause it, it's a broad term. It could mean a lot of things. Well, what, what were they doing specifically? So our school, Thomas Jefferson high school for science and technology was created in the 1980s to compete against the Soviet union at that time. Yeah. And then Russia. So it was created with a idea of bringing our brightest minds in science and technology. So what they did is they put in a merit based test, race blind, everything else was blind. Mm -hmm. And that's how the kids got in. So then in June 2020, the principal, Ann Bonitatibus, literally wrote to another teacher, 
we got to strike while the iron is hot and get rid of the merit-based admissions test. So that's what they were going. And why does this matter? It matters because what they were doing is they were putting a hit on our number one high school in America. Yeah. Yeah. It's that good of a high school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's... um. Uh, it merits and it, it's worth spending a time and you've you've written about the war on merit um, this isn't the first place or time that the war on merit has occurred uh, it, it it is certainly when we say woke and even I have gotten sick of the word woke because it's like it's a catch-all but it does but it does have a meaning and, yes. and, and it's, it's 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 the goal is to subvert western civilization in it many is. ways and merit is like a part of western civilization right. a merit-based society because our founders and Thomas Jefferson being one of the founders and uh, I guess ironic that it's in the name of this high school, right, right. they were so keyed into this idea that all men are created equal, that, that you are not, you are not, your, your destiny is not based on your ancestry. That was the whole point of America. And it's just so weird that, that you can, you can find so many similarities between the far left wokes and like far right racist Nazi types <laughs> like yeah. it's in the end it's like the same it's kind of the same ideology right yeah, get rid same. of merit yeah yeah get rid of merit dumb people down put them into tribes right mm -hmm. and have them all fighting each other and so I'm I'm setting that up I'm like taking you into my own journey into this that lands me then in Montgomery County Maryland yeah. it, earlier this year at that protest that you were talking about. Yeah. So for almost three years then, we had been waging this battle in our public schools. And there was this ironic alliance that had emerged mm -hmm. in order to destroy merit, bring identity politics into our schools. And that was this alliance that I call the woke army, mm -hmm. um, to use that favorite word of yours. Yeah. It's the religious right of Muslims yeah. with the far left of America. Right. And how did that express itself exactly in our school system is that there was a woman who was elected to our school board in Fairfax County, Virginia. The first time that I saw her running for office was at a fundraiser, get this, for American Muslims for Palestine. Okay, okay so this is going to make, this is, your head is like going to explode because you're like, okay, what? Why would she be there? Because she was part of that religious right in our Muslim community that has entered democratic politics yeah. in order to hijack the democratic agenda in, a, in the U.S. and American rights. And so all of a sudden, what's happening? She is part of the effort to bring this sexual and gender indoctrination into our yeah. schools and that's so ironic right yeah so. it, it, contradictory it's yeah just, it, you know it doesn't make sense coming from a religious woke muslim and we've seen this for a while you yeah. know and you, you call it the red green alliance and you wrote this book when like a while ago i just um, or I, in 2020 i wrote it i wrote it just now i just put it oh, out it's but just I've been, now sorry i, just I didn't realize how new it was yeah okay. it, it it's um it just been, it's been twenty years of writing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, I guess I guess we we've, we've been it's it's a book based on observations yes. that are certainly not new, yeah. and we we've been seeing how strange it is that for say you know, this is a good time to do this podcast too because right. on college campuses you've got a weird left wing obsession with Hamas, right? right? And it's like listen, it, listen, you LGBTQ groups, you, you'd be thrown from the rooftops in yeah. Gaza. You know that that's how they feel about you, and and we've been bringing up that contradiction forever. Yeah, on the right, but they don't care. No, they don't care, and now it's really expressing itself. You know, in the streets where the Democrats have had this alliance with people now who are ready to throw them out of office. Mm -hmm. You know, these campaigns that are happening in our Muslim communities in the United States to get rid of Biden, mm -hmm. calling him genocide, Joe. Right. You know, all of these things They'll get are more radical. Yeah, they're getting it's years in the making, but all of a sudden, then. I heard about this protest going on in Montgomery County, and what we had was Muslim parents now aligning with American, white American parents that are born in the United States against this gender ideology right. and identity ideology. A bunch of normal people coalescing. Yeah. I brought some of the books. These are books literally in our school God. systems today. This is in Maryland. Yeah, and Jeez. throughout the country. This was so crazy. They, you know, the left, and we did this in Texas, like banned, you know, or, or, or took off. They call it banning books, but it's like, no, we're, we're, 
we're assessing a curriculum. Right. Right. Exactly. So by anytime you have a curriculum, if you want to call it banning books, you could say it's banning books because your curriculum only includes 100 books, let's say. Right. So does that mean you just banned a billion books, other books? No, right. it doesn't mean you banned a billion books. It just says, this is what's on the curriculum. Yeah. I just want to get that out there. It drives me nuts. So this is, this says bye-bye binary. This right. is, um, this is for, uh, very small children because just the way the pages are and the pictures the are heavy, heavy it's, cardboard. It's, it's very book. clearly just for very, very small children. And um, what happens is that like this one, a B gay BCs is T is no longer for train, right? It is for what you can imagine. Trans. What it's yeah, going to be, right? Of course. They're so, so creative. At least, is, at least surprise me. T is for trans. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, words S is not, you know, for snake or spider, but for sachet. And so we think that this is, um, maybe many, many people might think that this is innocent and, but then, you know, this book, Gender Queer, which ends up with very violent and also these, you know, kind of risque images, right? Of So this was just just like, what, what, how did this get involved in this, in the school? How did it happen? Was it just end up in the in the in the um, in the library, or teachers actually talking about it? What was it ends up in the library, and you can see seals of approval on the front of these books because they become award winning by the American Library Association, which also is part of this machine, you know, trying to bring various ideologies and ideas that are age inappropriate. Um, mm-hmm. th- this is another book, Let's Talk About It, that was right. in Montgomery County, too. And I couldn't even believe it when I saw this, but it says... The stuff is just like, I mean... It's, inappropriate. It's just, it's, just, it's just guaranteed to confuse teenagers, yeah. too. I mean, it, in, a, in, in what's already a, a difficult time... Um, so this one tells the kids where to go to research. So just read up there at the top corner. Where does it tell you to research your... Great place to research fantasies and kinks safely. It's on the internet. Yeah. There are tons of people and communities who share your interests and have all kinds of advice. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just the online world is also chock-a-block full of pornography. Professionals and I mean, this, professionals and amateurs alike sharing their sexy adventures online. And then um, it teaches you how to show, share your masterpieces, which is your own wow. photos. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It does. It does. Wow. Yeah. Lighting and everything. Yeah. How to do the, so this is a, a how to. let's talk about it, the teen's guide to sex relationships and being a human. So apparently being a human is starting a, a, a webcam service and getting an OnlyFans account. I right. Mean, according right. to page 165 on this, on this like seemingly, because the, the, the cover is very Just, you know, normal. Yeah. Right? Like it, let's talk about whatever. it. Who wouldn't like, want to talk about yeah, anything? Okay. Innocuous. And, and why does this matter again? Because we're having a conversation, you know, about how bad ideas get into society. Right. And you know this as well as I do. It's always a machine. You know, it's a multi-million dollar machine. It's not just one book or one poster or one yeah. bad idea. It's, it's a machine. And that's what, as a reporter at the Wall Street Journal, that's what I always studied, right? right. Was, Documenting those little changes, yeah. right? Let's change this word. Let's, yeah. let's just, it, it's one step at a time. The left is so good at that. The right is so bad at it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe because we're not ideologues in that sense. Um, but you know, we could talk about that. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's too different, I guess, to compare. But man, but you but, have to and then com- you get to this point where this is okay. This, right. Because this is, what I just read is absurd. Because what, what they are doing is they're changing normative, right? They're changing the, right. what is I- our idea of healthy. Also, to me, that as yeah. a parent, that's what worried me the most when I started seeing mm-hmm. all of this. I am a feminist, you know, yeah. and I don't consider that a bad word. I do believe in uh, autonomy and choice and, and you know, uh, same sex marriage, you know, a sure. lot of these ideas that are considered socially progressive, yeah, but not for children, not for children, yeah. not like like teaching them. Look, there's a difference between. I'm not one of these conservatives who's like ban pornography. Like right. I'm not, you know, but but also don't teach my kids how to do it, right? And that you should find your kinks, whatever that is, yeah. online, and then figure out how to film it. Yeah, like what what the hell? <laughs> like, right. it it's so inappropriate. Like, so there I stood in front of Montgomery County Public Schools this spring, and I uh, 
videotaped a little selfie video yeah. there, and I said, this is where the woke army came to die because mm. this alliance had broken now because yeah. the Muslim parents were seeing that this indoctrination was coming after their children. And little did I know like how much that fissure was about to happen over this right. next year. Well, how did they, so they, but for over many years they sucked them in. Right? Yes. There was a belief by your, your Islamic community that, and, and I can see where this came from, right? It, it, I could probably map it out without you even telling it to me, but you can imagine that um, it, it comes from this idea that, you know, you're, you're more kind of, you're, you're more hardcore national um, patriotic types, um, post 9-11, join the military, tend to be conservative, Republican, uh, you know, tend to have not good ideas and say not good things about the Muslim community. And so there's just, there's this, I think, tendency for Muslims in America to probably go to Democrats who say, you know, we're here for you. We're here for minorities. We're right. the ones who protect minorities. We're the ones who see victims. We see that you're victims, et cetera. I mean, I assume that's sort of the story. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you know that uh, Muslim community voted for, uh, for George Bush, actually, yeah. because the, the anti-Semitism was so deep uh, back in 2000 that they refused to vote for Joe Lieberman. Interesting. Uh, because he was Jewish and very pro-Israel. And so... They voted for Bush. They supported Bush. They, they, they thought that they were going to get some national security uh, forgiveness from the Bush administration. Yeah. The 9-11 happened yeah. and Patriot Act. And they right. shifted then to the Democratic Party. And they actually, went, I, I actually rewrote my entire book in the summer of 2020, mm. looking at it through this new lens of what we discovered, these words, critical race theory. Yeah. Because what I learned was that they used this concept of race in order to then enter into the Democratic Party politics yeah. right. so that we would, because I've been a lifelong Democrat all my life, and what they were betting on is that you bring up race, and then that will trump, no pun intended here, but yeah. any, um, any consideration of the illiberalism mm -hmm. of their ideas. Like, they're, I, they are not just about age inappropriate books, but they are very much anti-gay, yeah. anti-women's rights. Yeah. Um, and, and so they kind of put blinders on their eyes about these illiberal ideas. Almost among both sides did. Yeah, they did. You're right. right. And You're both right. sides did in a yes. way just to have some kind of power alliance, which yes. is, you know, this, I guess the, the, I, the story of intersectionality right. in, in a nutshell. Yeah, and so then that brings us to 2020, where they continue this alliance because this um, school board member, for example, Abrar Omesh, mm -hmm. she thought she could exploit this intersectionality to bring her family's agenda against Jews and the state of Israel yeah. into the school system. And so, sure enough, she tweeted out a year ago about the apartheid state of yeah. Israel. You know, so mm -hmm. they were they were making this unholy alliance in order to further their own political agenda. And now it's just exploded. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, it's, you got to wonder what the future of the Democrat party is because the, the reaction on college campuses to Hamas has been extraordinary. In my opinion, I, I've never seen anything like it. And we, and we see these, these conflicts in Israel occasionally. So, right. um, it, we, we, we have some data to look at. We have some observations and, They've never been so extreme. It's like, you know, when your team does something really bad, uh, my, my, my reaction, if my team does something bad, is to kind of hide. Right, <laughs> and say, right. ah, I'm just, I'm just going to ignore that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go chanting in favor of them. But, but their reaction has been completely the opposite. They've doubled down on it, tripled down on it in the most absurd of ways. And so now you've, and, and, and yet, you, you do have a majority of the Democrat Party, like this, let's call it the establishment, your, right. norma your normative Democrat Party and, and and the majority of your members of Congress in the Democrat Party and Joe Biden who are very much saying no we're we're with Israel right. this was bad you can't say it's good you can't really whitewash it and good on them right they've, they've made yeah. some strong statements um you know not always as strong as I'd like maybe but for right. the most part like you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie and say that they're pro Hamas um but that's caused a major fissure, yes. right? Because yeah. you got a lot of, you got a major, especially the younger Democrat party is looking for that pro Hamas angle. And so right. now what? Yeah. So I brought you an illustration on how this happened. Um, 
because first what they had to do was they had to go after race, right? And they mm-hmm. and they have to erase Jews. Mm-hmm. So this was a book that was that has been in our school systems. It's called Not My Idea, a book about whiteness. Okay. Okay. This one. And I'm going to take you to this page. Um, and you can see what it says. This is one of the reasons you've seen on the conservative side an attempt to try and make children's books. I'm the author of a children's book. Yes. But it's, it's hard right. to break into this. What does it say about whiteness? Whiteness is a bad deal. Yeah. It always was. <laughs> yeah. You can see your pointy, t- pointy tail. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're white, you're, you're the devil. Um, contract binding you to whiteness. You get stolen land, stolen riches, special favors. Whiteness gets... To mess endlessly with the lives of your friends, neighbors, loved ones, and all fellow humans of color for the purpose of profit. Also, your soul signed below for the land, riches, and favors may be revoked at any time for any reason. Okay. It's kind of confusing, but you get the point. Um, white people are the devil. Right. Responsible for all bad things. Yeah, because there's the, look at the pointy tail. Yeah. Right? And that's for a child. And so how does this connect to the indoctrination of our college kids is that, um, you know me, so I, I like to, pr- I, I don't want to just say things, I want to yeah. prove it. So this is what they have said about America. Mm-hmm. What does it say? Very subtle, so right? Yeah, fuck America, this is native land, subtler colonialism. This gets back to the colonialism yes. thing and the Jews and your, your current, your modern, uh, so where was this? This is, you're showing me, just this for people who aren't awesome. watching, you're this showing is, me like a poster. This is a poster, right, exactly. That's We have to describe everything. Yeah. So this is a poster and this was posted in, this was in a school, in, in a school in Los Angeles public school system. Yeah. And it is basically an attempt And the other one says, Policing is a violent anti-black settler institution that originated as slave patrols. Um, Yeah, the the idea that there was never law enforcement before. Okay. (laughs) And and basically, because what do do we have to do? You know, so I was setting the stage that, you know, in 2020, I first confronted this when they were going after the idea of merit. Then after you dumb down our kids, you got to put bad ideas in their head. Yeah. You know, and that's what they've been doing for these last three years. And so then you fast forward to this major crisis on October 7th that seems so obvious, as you said. Mm -hmm. But they have hijacked the brains of yeah. our young there's, people. There's been a lot of preparation of the yes. of the minds at yeah. that point. We call it preparation of the environment and military speak. Like yeah. there's, and there's a lot that goes into that. Um, some of it's physical. Some of it's information warfare. And this has been longstanding information warfare. It, we've had right. this conversation a million times on this podcast. It's really difficult because there's nobody at the top pulling any strings. You know, it's like it's a movement that seems to move so seamlessly and well put together by, by some smart people, I guess, but I'm going to prove you. I'm going to prove to you that it is pulled by strings Okay. and it is. So in, in the book, I've got a cast of characters Okay. and those, that cast of characters begins with a man. Literally. Number one is his name is Hatim Bazian. Hmm. Yeah. Not a name we've heard before. Uh Uh-huh. It, everybody can remember it easily because when you spell it out, his nickname is Hatem okay. He's a lecturer at the University of California, Berkeley. Yeah. Came to America from Nablus in the West Bank. Okay. I did a pilgrimage to his home, his ancestral home at Nablus, because I wanted to see what is it there. I had a great lunch, had did some shopping. It's a It's a thriving city in the West Mm -hmm. Bank. It's not this image that is portrayed, right? Right. Well, people talk about the settle or the the refugee camps, and and that 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 evokes an image of a camp. They're 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 apartment buildings. I've been there. Oh my gosh! You know, they're they're apartment buildings. They're not the nicest places. I'm not saying they are, but they're they're apartment. They're basically like um, public housing projects. So, Representative Crenshaw, like I'm wearing, the people won't be able to see it, but I'm wearing a hoodie. That mm-hmm. says Israel Defense Forces, and I got it at a secondhand store right outside Bethlehem. Oh, at really? A Palestinian store, right? Because it's a burgeoning economy. Right. Bethlehem is in the West Bank. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Went I went to the uh, laser tag in Ramallah, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not saying that you know if people have grievances, then yeah. of course fight for your so in a nonviolent way yeah. your your rights that you wish, but. I went to Nablus to this man's ancestral home to understand his grievance. Well, he came to America 
the opportunities we gave folks like my father, who arrived in the 1960s as a student, just like Hatem Bazian. Mm -hmm. And Hatem Bazian is the founder of Students for Justice in Palestine. Okay. So he is the architect of this entire ca uh, campus, you know, from campus to really? campus campaign. So when, when did he start this? In the like, 80s. Okay, so some time ago. It has been a long time. And, and what I go through in my cast of characters is the organizations, Council on American Islamic Relations, yeah. uh, American Muslims for Palestine, yeah. the entire list of them. And, you know, what these folks have done, I live in Northern Virginia. They built a base there. It's literally at this street, 500 Grove Street mm -hmm. in Herndon, Virginia, just minutes from my house. And that base is what our customs department our irs our fbi have been investigating for decades now for funding and financing terrorism yeah. and we have people from this holy land trust mm -hmm. from that are in jail in texas because prosecutions were down there so that this has been decades in the making with this network of organizations you ought to wonder too that you look at the current ideology of the left and how obsessed it how obsessed it is with the victim oppressor narrative. Yeah. And you can trace that back to, to other think big, big thinkers, like unfortunately Kimberly Crenshaw is a name, um, Herbert Marcuse, but names like that from the sixties in America and also Soviet propaganda. You, you, there's, so there's that element, but you can also see how perhaps this starting back in the eighties, these, these student movements were also influential in creating modern yeah. wokeism, right? Because, yes. it, because in the end it's all, it's all, it's all the, the same thing, which is victor oppressor narratives and convenient victor oppressor narratives against some oppressor. There doesn't have to be a, a common philosophy or set of policies that tie together the, the oppressed right. as it turns out. Yeah. But those two, but eventually that, that can fissure, which is like may, maybe what we see recently. And it's, it's just like you were saying earlier, where normally you would think that dishonorable behavior would cause people to run and hide, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, the disown, assault, yeah. like the assault on innocent civilians on October 7th. Yeah. But you understand this very well. I did training for our military that went to Afghanistan. And I would train them on shame-based culture. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We had to learn about this. Right? Well, we learned the hard way sometimes. Yeah. Um, we didn't get your training, actually. Uh, we should have taken your training. Yeah. Cause, but you figured out pretty quick. We'll go ahead and explain what you mean by it, and then I'll well, tell you my stories. Well, what we taught was that when you interrogate or put a uh, Afghan in front of a, in a lie detector mm -hmm. and ask them to confess to a crime, you're not going to get the lie oh, detector to go yeah. off because in thing, our yeah. shame-based culture we're actually not always taught to own up mm -hmm. you know and that's the thing it's that not a sin to lie to a non-muslim one that's one point not the lesson that my parents taught me right then. But, but technically yeah they can, they, but they, for the uh, for the fundamentalists that's mm -hmm. exactly what they teach and then also in a shame-based culture you reverse everything Mm -hmm. You know, so by October 8th, the narrative had flipped, you know, and instead of looking at the crime of October 7th, yeah. that's when we got the narrative to flip to 75 years of occupation. Yeah. You know, whatever if anything, need, it's like the intensity of it somehow in their minds justified an equally intense opposing reaction, yeah. whereas in a, to a Western mind, that makes no sense. Yeah. And so I wanted to just show you the evidence. This is... I want to go back in history. Remember the Muslim, the so-called Muslim ban that was not a Muslim yeah, ban? Yeah. This is the, uh, what, for those that are listening, it's just a beautiful graphic. And down at the bottom, it says, you know, f repeal the ban. Right. So this became part of the propaganda right. campaign of, uh, of Muslims in America oh, yeah. as they, victims. They attach themselves to that stupid thing yeah so hard and you know just for everybody i remember this because i remember having to talk about it. The, the problem was trump at one point did say ban muslims yeah but the but the policy was not that the the policy was if your country does not abide by these security precautions when we go through a, a visa application say then then you can't get any more visas i mean yeah. so so some of the countries weren't muslim and um, and but. and it was policies that President Obama had put in place. Also. Yeah, they, they weren't they weren't that crazy. I mean, it, in the end, it wasn't really crazy policy at all. So what we have then is 
one of these organizations funded f- out of 500 Grove Street called Sound mm-hmm. Vision and this poster. And you can see what they have over this set, the second image. What do they say about the, the babies being killed? Yes, no beheaded babies. Blood yeah. libel used to kill Jews, now Palestinians. So this is from, okay, so this is, what is this from? This is from an organization called Sound Vision. Okay. And th- this is part of the propaganda. And if those that are listening, they can't see it. It's a yeah. slick little poster, best of graphics. And what you then have is a machine. This is this yeah. cleric, Omar Suleiman. Who so just, has, just to be clear, yeah. what I'm reading is because I, I, I've kind of, I just kind of read through that. So there, there's a headline. Um, it's basically saying that this, this narrative about beheaded babies is, is, is fake news. Yeah, yeah, it says that exactly. It's not true. Yeah. So now true. what they're doing is their information operation campaign, as you mm-hmm. said, and that doesn't just happen because it's one person, you know, on a uh, Canva account, you know, creating graphics. This is a machine. Yeah. And so this guy, his this is a poster that I picked up at one of the anti-Israel rallies. They created this poster of Omar Suleiman, a mm. cleric in Texas with thousands of followers Crazy. who is basically arguing that the ho- hospital bombings were the... There's so many lies in that one. So this one says, Dear World, Israel just bombed a Christian hospital in Gaza and murdered over 500 Palestinian civilians. White phosphorus chemical bombs confirmed by Human Rights Watch was not enough to open your eyes. Over 1,000 dead children wasn't enough. Will you open your eyes and act now? First of all, um, you know, when people say eyes, plural, that's a microaggression and I take offense. Uh, so that's what I would tweet back at him, but uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. But um, you got to you got to play along sometimes. It's funny. The uh, there, there's the, we remember this. This is actually why Rashida Tlaib here in Congress right. was uh, was censored because she kept propagating this particular lie. So he says Christian hospital in Gaza. No, that's not a Christian hospital. Murdered 500 Palestinians never happened. Of course, the truth was Israel didn't even bomb it. It was a misfired rocket from Hamas, but also it just hit the parking lot. Didn't really yeah. even hurt anybody from, and there was no white phosphorus. I mean, it's just, it's just pure lies and just no, and, and this again, no shame for yeah. no shame, no shame. And, and it was interesting the, when you, well, I want to go back to the I shame. I just want to show you, I want to show you like the fine print. This is why I go to their protests. I mm-hmm. wait till the end when they're trashing all their signs right. and I so pick you them gather up. It. Yeah. You, it says at the bottom, U.S. Palestinian Community Network. Right. These are when real you, organizations with real, real funding. Exactly. So and who's funding this? Like, let's wait, we, we, we'll, we'll talk about shame real quick because yeah. I thought your comment was interesting and I'll say my story, but then I want to go back to the funding and Islam in general. Um, it was interesting when you brought up shame because so so one of our problems when we when we work with Afghan like our, right. our partners is you can't talk to them the way that I would talk to another seal. If a right. seal screws up, I say you screwed up, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna beat you down for it. Yes, because that's how we train each other. That's right. how we get better. It's a, we we have a shame is good kind of culture. Yeah, they are completely the opposite. If you do that to one of them, especially if you do it in front of their their, their colleagues, they'll murder you. Yeah. In Iraq, they'll be really pissed at you. In Afghanistan, they will murder you. Yeah. And it's like, you've got to be, we had to, we had to, we were, we had to, our, our luckily our interpreters are our, our greatest asset. They're yeah. the ones who are like, Hey, you guys, you can't talk to them like that. They're right. talking about literally shooting you now. Yeah. And you've and, shamed them. Yeah. Cause you've shamed them. them right. Yeah. Because you're not allowed to critique and cause, cause our, right. our version of critique to them is like this, this whole, this horrible shaming issue. And anyway, it's just, it's, it makes, it's also why their militaries will never be good. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very interesting longer conversation about uh, military stuff, but okay. So who's back to, yeah. <laughs> so who's Palestinian community network, who's funding it and like, where, where are these? So, so the internet thinks it all comes from Qatar. Like, yeah. how does that work? Who's, well, who's doing it? Well, for, so I was born in 1965. I grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia, and I saw the Saudi funding of our mosque, of our Qurans, mm-hmm. of our, you know, preaching actually from the pulpit. And now the funding is shifted to Qatar and Turkey also. And the but what does that mean? You know, because when we say Saudi, does that mean like the prince himself is like, I want America to, I want American kids 
to to believe this? Like, does the does the do the leaders of Qatar say, "I want American kids to believe this," or is it like rich people who live there? Because there's a distinction. Is it rich people who it's, live there? Or is it both? It's, it's both. Like, I'm gonna I'm I am now bringing out my noble Quran, mm. and so the noble Quran, just as an illustration. Who is it that published this noble Quran? Oh, guess what? This is exactly like one of the lessons I gave to the military yeah. guys yeah. going to Afghanistan because I wanted them to Quran see complex. who is it? Who is it? Can you? King Fahd? King Fahd complex. Fahd so complex. that is the government, mm -hmm. the government entity. And you're, you're seeing of, that. Of Saudi Arabia. Of Saudi Arabia yeah. and the government. Yeah. And you're opening it. You know, from left to right, like the, yep. the, the books are. See how good I am at reading Arabic. Oh, yeah. Did you learn? Yeah, I did. That's I used to great. To, so, so let's see. Um, anyway, <laughs> not very good. I want to see what page you're I, on. I remember. I remember some of the letters. I'm going to show you. So this one, um, this is the first chapter of the Quran. It's Al Fatiha. Mm -hmm. And so, can you read the first sentence? It starts in the name of Allah, the most great. Oh, oh, in Arabic? Yeah. Okay, that's going to be harder. Bismillah. You, I Bismillah. Know you, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. If we, if I'm going to have um, PTSD from going back to my Arabic classes. Um, <laughs> I know. I, trust me, I had them too. Yeah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, which means in the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful. Yep. Right? So, you are now invoking the word of God. And so I'm going to take you to the bottom verse here. Guide us on the straight way. So guide us on the straight way. It's a great idea, right? Mm -hmm. What does it say next? The way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not the way of those who earned your anger, such as the... Oh, man. Okay, yeah. got to flip the page. And That's read the, the parentheses and such go to the... Yeah. Such as the, I don't think See? I'm in the right spot. Yep, right there. Oh, such as the Jews. <laughs> such as the Jews, nor of those who went astray, like the Christians. That's okay. Very specific. And, the and, infidels. And in Arabic, it's not there. So can you believe this representative? Wait, wait, wait. So yeah. that you, if you read that in Arabic, you don't read that? You don't read it. That's interesting. So Jews How is... How do you explain that? How do you explain it? How do you explain it? I don't know. So the well, English translation says Jews and Christians. And what does it say exactly in Arabic when you read it? It says, um, it, just it just says. It just says not the, the others who have strayed. Yes. It just It's very vague. Like yes. we say in Christianity. I mean, yeah. we say people who have strayed from the word of God all right. the time. Right. So it's a normal thing to say. So in Arabic, it says that. But in English, it says, just to be clear, we mean Jews and Christians. Just That's in case crazy. You, just in case you don't get it. Why? Yeah. yeah, and you read who the publisher right. was. So, that's so a, why? Yeah. So who was the publisher again? King Fahd, King Fahd Authority. Now, so yeah. so like, what year is that? What what a current what current Saudi? So they are now prince. Would would they stand by this? You yeah. think or are they kind they of reforming? They are removing moving out from it. Yeah. You know, they are. But yeah. but, but they are but they are the start of radical Islam, exactly. Wahhabism, Islam. Exactly. All, it all started in Saudi Arabia. Like the, there's a then, longer history and here. And then Qatar was like, wait. Yeah, you we, can't we want some, yeah, us. Can't, yeah, exactly. You know, it's a competition for the Muslims. That's for Sunni Muslims, to be clear, yeah. this is Sunni extremism, which is related but different than Shia extremism. Related, um, different, but parallel. Because in Shia Islam, they're teaching the same hate. Same things. Yeah. Same, kill Jews, kill Christians. So they, ju they, they just tend to organize themselves to do it, whereas like, because I don't see like suicide bombers from Shia militias. <laughs> That's interestingly enough. I could be wrong, but... Though in Lebanon, they would say there oh, is, that's true. right? That's Through true. the Hezbollah. Yeah, yeah Hezbollah. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is then, why is this so important? Like, how does this all connect? This all connects because, you know, for me as a human being on this earth, I saw, and as a Muslim, I saw through the 70s, 80s, this indoctrination. Hamas yeah. is Sunni, aren't they? Sunni, yes. So what, how, this alliance, right? nobody ever talks about this. Alliance yeah. of Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran. What? What is it connected by? The Jews. The Jews. It's always exactly. the Jews. Yeah. The hate of the Jews and the hate of Israel. And you being a military person, I wanted to take a moment to also give you the inside scoop on the extremist military plan. Because hmm. I've read, you, you know this fancy word eschatology? Mm. Do you know what that word means? Of course I do, but tell it to the audience. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. exactly. laughs> Wait, let me Google it. <laughs> 
end times. Okay. So it is the revelations about how the world will end. Interesting. So the, my parents did not teach this to me as no. a critical thinker in Islam, but the extremists believe it. And you're going to recognize some of these words. They say that the soldiers of the Muslim army will come from Khorasan. Mm. Do you remember where Khorasan is? It's in the north yeah. of Afghanistan, yeah. the border with Iran. Yeah. They will come through Iraq, Iran, through Damascus. And in Damascus, they say that Jesus will appear. Yeah. And that the Mahdi, which is a common last name also, the Messiah in Islam, right. will ask Jesus uh, to lead the prayer. Mm. And Jesus will say, no, no, you lead it to give reverence mm. to Islam. You know, that's their right. way of like, oh, we... We believe in Jesus, yeah. but, but he, the, to them, Jesus is another prophet, not at the same level as Muhammad. That's yeah. basically Islam, right? And then, I don't know if you ever went there, but more, like not far from Haifa mm -hmm. in, in northern Israel is this town. You can remember it because there's the word Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And so from that is Megiddo is... Armageddon is okay. this word. And I went there uh, and you can literally buy a t-shirt that says, I survived the apocalypse. Oh, really? Because yes. that's, that's the state of the... I remember, I, now that you're bringing this up, I remember this being a key yes. narrative by ISIS at the height exactly. of the caliphate. And right. one thing that always um, I, I remember was was that the man that they battled was actually a one-eyed man. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, yes. hey, <laughs> how you're, about that? You're the Dajjal. The, so the, so the Dajjal? Dajjal is the Antichrist. I'm the Antichrist. Yeah. But in this case, that means anti the bad guys. So anti Antichrist. Yeah. What do it's they mean the metaphor. That? So yeah. the, the bad guy. Though. Yeah. I'm the good guy in, in real life. Yeah. Okay. And so... <laughs> So I thought that was kind of. I always, I always thought that was kind of cool. Like they thought they were going to battle me on the know, <laughs> in the in the end times. Yeah, hey, it's and, not too late. Yeah, and sometimes um, you know even they uh, demonize somebody like myself who questions them, and you know they don't actually use the six six six, but it's the same metaphor that mm -hmm. like there's going to be a mark of the right. of the of the beast. You right. know, the Dajjal is a beast. Right. But how does it connect to today? Is that when I heard the story of the attack on October 7th of the music festival, I, I just got goosebumps because I heard the story of how those young people, the young women and the young men, hid behind stones and trees. And that's the awful revelation that they claim will be the end times. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was the conversation happening in serious ways with Hezbollah and Iran, right? Is this is this the end time? Because they believe yes, this. exactly. But they weren't sure, I think, tactically speaking, is this the time we go? Now, luckily, right. their decision has pretty much been no. It, it will not be. Main, mainly because the United States says, we'll, we'll, we'll stop you. Right. Which is a big deal. But um, they're waiting. They're you waiting. Know, they're They've waiting. been waiting for forever, yeah. And this is the... Uh, this is the reason why I brought my Quran is because as a Muslim, those, and you know this relationship that Jews and Christians also have to have with the sacred text, which is, yeah, there are portions that are not relevant for this time. Yeah. You know? and, and I want to talk about that in, the, yeah. in our time, you know, because you're, there's different types of Christians, there's different types of Jews, there's different types of, of Muslims. Um, I grew up in a Muslim country, on, you know, in Egypt, like, I was, I don't remember it, I was a little baby, but... Um, you know, I, I, my parents were, I, I guess, uh, obviously exposed to the culture. And, you know, so I, I was always exposed to a very internationalized, uh, multicultural setting um, yeah. growing up because of our travels and, and the way I grew up. So, um, and then, of course, my multiple deployments all into Muslim countries. Like, I, I, I know how different people can be. Right. Um, you probably had a beer or two with a Muslim easily yes easily sure exactly. and um you know but but and others wouldn't wouldn't even think of it right right and and it's and you've heard the love stories and the broken hearts you know like all the human experiences sure. that happen and 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 so you know how do you i the, the the book says what it says and and, and the quran in particular has much more definitive um you know i guess how would how, how would i even describe this i would say definitively you know, a bad verses um, for modern times. The, the Bible has some verses too that you're right. like, well, I mean, 
that's not exactly what we meant, you know, and because it's, and we say it's written in the context of the yeah, times, there's reasons exactly. for that, but the Quran goes a little, a little further than that. I mean, so how do you, what's, what's the proper way to talk to, to people who aren't that familiar with Islam about this and then what the divides are and the future of, of Islam, et cetera? Well, the other fancy word is this word hermeneutics that I've learned, which is about our relationship to sacred text. And what I learned was that what my parents taught me, which was those chapters and verses that talk about war and how you're going to take sex slaves, you know, which is what Hamas believes mm -hmm. which is leading us to this crisis at this moment of yeah. those young women that are in their custody. Those were for those times and just those times. And so the way that we've developed a new movement called the Muslim Reform Movement is that we take those verses and those chapters that are time-tested for today, right. you know, and that we leave in the past those that are uh, contradicted by common sense, yeah. one, and human rights laws, and right. yeah, and our laws yeah. today. And you know what's interesting is Islam was founded in 600 something AD. So it's yeah. got, it's, it's 600 years younger than Christianity. You almost got to wonder, does, do, does every religion have to go through a growing period where it finally normalizes back to the way it's supposed to be? Christianity, of course, talks about how to treat slaves. Um, it, the Bible talks about that. Right. It doesn't mean it con it's condoning slavery, in, in, at least in our modern interpretation of it. It is, it, is, it is referencing the context of the times and saying, you know, you, you should... You should be the most Christian you can be in this situation. That's how we would interpret it now. Yeah. So what we have today, like in Sunni Islam, is four schools of jurisprudence that have survived into the 21st century. And the, they're the ones that you learned about, you know, the Hanafi, Maliki, you know. And mm -hmm. um, these ones, though, are all very orthodox. That's the problem. Yeah. And so Maliki, for example, on an issue that's very close to my heart, is the only one that allows you to have a dog in your home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They Remember really, that they point? Think, they, they think we're crazy when we're like yeah. thinking about dogs as pets. And, and it's religious yeah. because in the other schools, they teach you that if a dog enters your home, the angels won't enter. So mm -hmm. you'll appreciate this, that I ended up getting a dog when my son was about 10. Um, you know, the, what you do for a, yeah. a, a boy. And I told my mom, I asked my mom, what about the angels that won't enter and, and our relatives that believe that? And she said, mm -hmm. the relatives can stay outside then, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and that's yeah. common sense, right? That's yeah. a grandma right. who wants her grandson to have that, that joy that you know with a pet dog. And so Lily was a part of our home. You know, she would lay on my father's prayer rug mm -hmm. and um, and she was like, like happens with dogs, right? She brought me happiness and solace when I had hard times as a mom. And, um, and that's the joy that I think that kind of fundamentalist interpretation steals from people. So that yeah. these young men too, that join Hamas, you know, it was like, I know that you felt this, like it was like a bloodlust, wasn't it? When they went across that border grabbing those young women, like, like, oh, we are now able to access this world that mm -hmm. is denied us because of that rigidity that happens with authoritarianism, which is... The are you ever going to get rid of it? Because, again, the Quran is different than the Bible in that the Quran is much more explicit and detailed about, like, <laughs> some of these actions. So how can you ever rid Islam of, of that fanaticism if you, you can't change the text? Well, what we'll, we can do, what we can do, they obviously changed it, right? In their own ideological yeah, little, interpretation, yeah, you know what I mean? Did, so if you, if you even um, take from their manipulation and use it for good, you just say, you know, you abrogate verses. You yeah. know, you say that that was in the seventh century, that's a but defensive you, yeah, but war. But you need leaders to, to yeah, really... you need leaders. And that's a, the, exactly the point, is that right now, talk about unholy alliances, as you know, we have a military base in Qatar. Mm -hmm. Qatar, through Al Jazeera, is spewing this I I ridiculous interpretations out into the world of the Muslim Brotherhood. And so sometimes, honestly, for me as an American Muslim, like in, uh, appreciating the freedoms that I have in this nation that no Muslim country would allow me, yeah. I feel so sad that as a nation, we just aren't saying no to them. Yeah, you know? well, Qatar's an interesting foreign policy case. People yeah. are like... 
uh, cutters come up in the news a lot because of these kind of things. And so I get a lot of questions about it. Like, come on, Dan, like do something about it. I'm like, well, Hey, for, we, we've known about cutter the whole right. time that right. they, they are, they are very transparently playing both sides. Yeah. This is what they do. Um, you know, they're 20 minutes from Iranian airspace. So you have to under, that's why they do it. And they're transparent with us about why they do it. We use them, they use us. So it is, it is, it's a transactional relationship. It is not a friendly related. We're not friends. We're trans, we're, we're transactional neighbors or transactional relationship partners, whatever. It's a very similar situation with the Saudis, frankly. I mean, you know, these are not, now the Saudis are moving in a better direction, right. you know, slowly but surely. It's, yeah. Maybe you'd agree or disagree with that. I, I do agree that, you know, wow, women get the get to drive now and yeah. get to vote. You know, these are just common uh, human rights that, right. that citizens should have. Right. But as you know, if you're gay or atheist, it's a yeah. crime punishable still, still by not death. Okay. But yeah. they're changing these these Qurans too. They're they, not going to be publishing Jews and Christians are yeah. are your enemy right, right right on page 1. Yeah, right on page it's 1. Like Genesis you saw like right that. there. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, who who wrote the according to Islamic tr- faith, who wrote the Quran? The well, the, the hand of God of course, but but like who The tradition is and I I did the pilgrimage to Mecca, so I'm officially called a Hajjan, they say. Uh-huh. And so we went outside Mecca and there's a cave. And this is another issue. You know, when you take the exit for Mecca, it says non-Muslims have to take a U-turn out. You know, mm. that's what I don't like. Like, mm. I don't like the fact that I did get to go to Rome. You yeah. know, I, oh, no, I we didn't. can't enter. We can't enter in Afghanistan. We were very careful about not entering mosques. Yeah. So we, well, now we had Islamic partners who would go in and, and search for, because that's where they tend to, you know, if we can't enter, they're going to put bombs in there. I know that. I know that because this is when I woke up, you know, was when my dear friend Danny Pearl was kidnapped. And when I, when we were trying to find Danny in 2002, you know, back in in the beginning of our real direct conflict with this extremism, I learned that the photographs of Danny had been dropped off at Friday prayer at a mosque. And that's when I knew that we needed to take back our mosques, you know, to your point. Where, what kind of mosque, in Pakistan or? It was in Karachi, yeah. yeah. It was. Another another kind of frenemy of the United States, right? Yeah, exactly. These just sort of, and I I think people, it frustrates people. I'm unemotional about it. It's like, yeah, look, we, we, this is the world. The world is crazy and it's full of really dangerous, crazy people. you know, they're not our friends. You shouldn't think they're, they're not like the British. Um, they're, they're transactional and you have to accept that we use them as, as necessary. And but I just want us their to, interests aren't always perfectly aligned. I just want us to prevail. You know, yeah. that's the thing for me is that so many people, including Muslims, are suffering because of this totalitarian ideology that is really Muslim supremacy. Yeah. You know, it is male supremacy, it's Muslim supremacy, it's dumb supremacy because mm-hmm. they're really bad ideas. And I just sometimes don't know how we we are going to win and compete when you have this multi-million dollar machine of indoctrination opposed to common sense ideas that yeah. women should have equal inheritance to a man, that a Jew has as equal rights to a Muslim. Uh, that a, a woman can marry anyone she chooses. Yeah. You know, these are such fundamental ideas that we're still struggling with in our Muslim communities. And I want a partner in the West in right. fighting those ideas. Well, what's, what's the, what's your general assessment of the Muslim community in America? Um, and, and maybe compare it to say France, a uh, huge Muslim community in France, but I would say it, my my observation is that it's much more diverse in the United States. You've got a lot of reformist types, much more moderate types, c- certainly some some more fundamentalist types. But in places like France, you've got a real problem. Yeah, with, with fundamentalists, it's it's so out in the open in France. The intolerance and the and the regressive interpretations of Islam are preached from the pulpit very mm-hmm. uh, widely in the UK, yeah. in France. In the US, it's much more subtle, but the, the real serious threat we have is the organizations that are pushing political Islam mm. that have joined now with the far left yeah. to create Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan right. Omar. Right. Uh, you know, my other display that I brought... This is this is the poster that is um, 
standing yeah, with along with the and Palestine. The occupation now, yep. Party and for Socialism and Liberation. Party for Socialism and Liberation in small print. Right. And that's so who What they, do these things have to do with each other? They, it's it totalitarianism. Just, it's, a, it's, a power, it's a power, it's just a power um, association. You know, it's an association to build power, power coalition. It's a power coalition to also, just like you said at the very beginning, destroy the West. Yeah. Really, as we this know question it. question is like, to do what? You know, <laughs> their, their policy goes to destroy the West. Why? Because they don't like it. I mean, it's, I think they all have different reasons, to be honest, but. Yeah, and to destroy Israel. Like, that's really at the heart of this battle that we're facing today yeah. is they are now out in the open about their desire to destroy Israel from the river to the sea. And the socialists see it as an opportunity to bring in their, you know, anti-capitalist, anti-colonial system. That's a good point. I can, that, yeah, you're, that, that's an interesting observation there. So it, it's the socialists see it as their opportunity to... to, to to push their Democratic Party further left. Yes. Because, uh, you know, Biden's pretty damn far left for me. I just look at my these EPA regulations coming out, but they, they would go so much, so much further right. if they could, uh, you, some of these people. And you see they're threatening him, right? They're, yeah. I was at the march where they came to the gates of the White House. Mm -hmm. I had my back pinned to the iron fence that we've got there. Yeah. And between those rails that we have... They were flinging the Palestinian flag and their posters that say murdered by Israel yeah. of the Palestinians. You know, It's crazy. It's so much bolder than it's ever been before. Yeah. And it's, it's just wild. Yeah, and it's going back to that. But do you think, they'll, do you think they've probably gone too far? I oh, mean, do you think, they have do you absolutely think gone is, too yeah. far. They have gone beyond far. Like This is not even any more, to me, protected speech. You know, I, as a journalist, believe well, I mean, in protected speech. I mean, not your opinion of whether it's gone too far. I mean, whether it's strategically they've gone too far in the sense that they're going to lose support from your more I normal so. independent voters that actually swing elections. But what, what we need is the Democratic Party not to cave right, right now to right. them and their threats. Because My worry is not now. I don't think they're not going to cave now, but, but 10 years from now, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's more younger Democrats that run and win these seats. That's, that's when it gets scary. And that's what they're doing. They're grooming Right. You know, they are grooming the youth. That guy, Hatem Bazian that I mentioned, mm -hmm. he groomed the keyboard warriors that are now our street warriors in right. their intifada on our streets. This is something that is um, serious. And, you know, one of the other items that I brought here was literally a toolkit. I want you to just see how it all comes full circle. You remember I told you this began for me as a newsletter editor at yeah. the PTSA? Yeah. Now, this is the new document that has been created. Your glasses, I know. Where we're are they? Just, just had them. them in, like here a second ago. Are they? Oh, they are. Okay, great. Um, I know yeah. you didn't know that this was going to be read aloud hour, so, yeah. right? What well, does it say at the top? So on October 9th, so this is Fairfax for Palestine Toolkit. Toolkit. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So social media accounts announced a disappointingly one-sided gesture to lower flags to half staff to honor the lives lost in the terror attack committed against Israel. This excludes the Palestinian civilians who were hurt by the Hamas attack. Okay, well, well, well I'll stop reading. What, what, what's the... And then what this is, is this is the actual toolkit that was created for the students uh -huh. in Fairfax County Public Schools. And look what it's even got. The... Oh, it's got chance. The appropriate chance, appropriate clothing, dress for walkout protest. So this was given to students at, at, at public schools? Yeah, my son's high, oh, alma mater. Yeah. You know, the number one high no school. No gang symbols, okay. No <laughs> gang symbols. Still can't use alcohol or tobacco, so that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, geez. And, and uh, read a couple of the chants that they're saying. Yeah, the chants from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. There you go. And it's like, did, did, did these, you know, woke left administrators even under, I don't think they understand. They do understand. They do. Like they that, that do. means Jews dead. That means Jews dead if, if, if it's river to the sea. But what happens for them is that that lobby, that lobby, this is in Northern Virginia. Remember? And you know where this was chanted? Langley High School. Yeah. And where, what's it Langley? Yeah. The CIA. The CIA. Oh. Yeah. And. And I brought for you one of the pictures that was taken of a student at Langley High School, two students. 
And it's a poster that they made for their anti-Israel rally. Let's see. And it has, what if, What do you see on the stars? Oh, yeah. They, they replace the, uh, the, the stars of our, so it's an American flag. They replace our, each star with a swastika. A swastika. And then, you know, the free Palestine, like real creative here. So implying, I'm, 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 I'm assuming the implication is that it's uh, America and Israel that are the Nazis. Exactly. And that the, the, the Palestinians are the new, the new oppressed Jews. I mean, it's, it's hard to make sense of this nonsense. And these are just, Normal looking, well, they blocked or blocked out their faces. I, I blocked are, out yeah, their faces. Kids thinking like this is cool. It, it's more than that though, because it's back to indoctrination. Like they do believe this, you know right. that that they've thought about it for a grand total of five seconds. But but they're a kid, and they'll they'll you know they'll, they attach themselves to movements fast. They do, but they have an uh, entire machine behind them getting these ideas these bad ideas that's yeah. what i want to emphasize because it's not just a kid that came up with like how am i going to mess with no. the american flag uh, yeah. There's because you know the the sign that i showed you from los angeles school system had already framed america as the kkk right you know it replaced the c in america with kkk and so the swastika and the kkk like it all becomes symbol right. of hate these, fr- these are so frighteningly well organized yeah even by even when being organized by so many different people yes. and organizations it's frighteningly in sync and, and it, we see this a lot with far left movements and, right. and their ability to sort of think like this like this machine and it's it is terrifying and requires us to to mostly just expose it because the vast majority of people are against it. And right. as we saw recently, what we started this episode with, with, you know, a bunch of parents from all different you know, right. Christians, Muslims, et cetera, coming together and saying enough is enough. Yeah. And that's where I believe like our America will reject this. Yeah. You know, this is the America. That it will, but it's got to be exposed. It's got I'm so and glad that you say that actually, because I, I do tell everybody that, if you just set as your goal exposing the truth, you will succeed. Yeah. You know, especially now, post it on Twitter. Send it to, um, you know, libs of TikTok. Send mm-hmm. it to me. Send it to you. Yeah. We will help expose things. And, and it makes me feel better in terms of our, you're, you're a strategic thinker. Right. You think about winning, right? right. You want to win. We, we have to win America. And we will. Azra, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for being Great. a yeah. champion for our nation. Of course, thank you.